Hey folks, how's it going? Today, I'm at one of my old sites. This has been a site of uh, very productive relics. And what I'm going to do today <laughs> is do the other part of the research. Um, unlike the majority of relic hunters, metal detectorists, and stuff like that, I like to get in and excavate the foundations and and uh, find out more of the history, the understanding, the knowledge, because those are relics too. You got to understand everything you can about a property before you completely abandon it. I don't just go in one time to each and every home site and that's it. There's too many that do that. They're just looking for coins. Um, I don't care about coins, really. They're nice to find once in a while, but it's the history, it's the understanding, it's how people lived, it's the artifacts that you you can't get with your metal detector. Um, so I'm at this site that uh, I think was some kind of boarding house or hotel or something like that. And this site is pretty much searched out as far as metal is concerned. Um, there are a lot of cornerstones and stuff that we're going to mark on our map. We're going to make a nice little map of this area. We got that nice copper uh, lightning rod that I looked up last night because um, I was interested. Uh, it's expensive on eBay for twisted copper lightning rod. So I might cut that up and bring some of that home. But uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm inside the property right now. And let me give you a layout. There are some brick here in the very, very old clay brick. It's pretty grown up in here. This is, this is some clay brick that I've found. Um, there's some more clay brick right there that I've found, which suggests a chimney here somewhere. There's not a huge mound of brick. So, we'll dig that out a little bit and uh, make sure we know exactly where the location of that chimney was. But there's a lot of information in here. Um, that I haven't found yet. <sighs> this spot that I'm standing in right now, right here, I'll give you a little wide view. This spot right here, for some reason, was just loaded with jewelry. Yeah. So I'm going to excavate this area out today. We're going to dig down, we're going to see if we can find datable material down at the level where the house actually sat. House, hotel, boarding house, something. It was something. And the more I know, the better. Um, because this property is just about ready to be abandoned by me. I've been here plenty of times. Uh, I've learned a lot, but I need to learn a little bit more before I get out of here. There's even more lightning rod over here, too. I don't know if that is copper or if that's iron. I don't know. It might be the older stuff. I know uh, copper, well, not just copper, but lightning rod. Uh, I think it was um, in Boston. Uh, some gentleman in Boston, like 150 years ago or something like that, uh, came up with the idea. And that's how old the lightning rod is. So guess it's a pretty good idea you know it directs the energy the lightning away from your home um, it laying on the ground gives me a good idea of the size of the structure because it came down with the house and features like this are odd the last time I was here I showed this as well we have that stone that stone that stone, that stone, that stone, that stone. And I think it goes out that way. 
and it might go out that way a little bit. But what was this? It's got a little center piece. Was this one of those uh, those walk-in kind of window areas or something? It's strange. So I want to dig down in here a little bit and uh, see if I can't figure that out. There's another big stone over there. And this was a big structure. A huge structure. I think this was the end of the cornerstone here and then it went that way. But, I mean, it, it is big. <laughs> so far, I've only identified one uh, fireplace. So, all right, let me plot this, all these stones, on this map, and, uh, and we'll see what it looks like. So I just got done doing the layout of this property, uh, measuring from stone to stone, marking every uh, large stone I could find, um, and then the bricks and stuff like that. And, of course, the lightning rod... Um, and here's what I have. Check it out. So this is what it looks like. That way is east. That way is west. That way is north, south. And I'm sitting towards the backyard. Which this would have been the backyard. Most likely. Um, this should be the front. Because it faces, there's a road out here. Nice old road. And here's where I find all my jewelry. Right in here in this section. Now, <laughs> as you can see, I mean, we have, like, perfect cornerstones here. But not coming here, like this. This is an odd, odd stone out that way. What looks like... It looks like this would probably be more realistic. Because there's nothing out here. And these are kind of... This probably goes over here. Um, and these, who knows what those marked. They might have been in here doing something. Um, but the lightning rod... One is coming out of the ground right here. Which is probably the very front. Which they should have been put on the corners. And one is right here on this back corner. Um, and I don't know, I, I got the, uh, fireplace, the fireplace is here, and I still don't know what that structure was, that's a strange structure in there, very strange, but it was inside of the, the house, um, and you can see he laid out some stones, uh, there should have been a couple more over here maybe, but he had something going on where he needed extra support over here. A lot of extra support. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I might have to plot this on um, some software with all these measurements and see uh, what it actually really looks like because drawing it, you can see it, but it, it's not precise. Um, the 4 feet, 3 feet, 15 feet, it's not precisely spaced. So, we'll throw it on some software and see what it looks like. But uh, this is the orientation of the house. It should go just like this. And um, side yard, side yard, front yard, backyard, I think. Now, I want to get in here and excavate this area out right there. So, let's go do that. Let's go see what we can find. Now, we already started getting some glass up. We got this little uh, piece right here. Pretty nice. And uh, what looks like window pane. Nice old blue window pane. Not just that, but this right there. It's an awful cracked and broke. Let's see if we can get it out and semi intact. Intact and see. It's Mason. Nice blue mason. Actually, it's kind of greenish, isn't it? Oh, it is blue. No number on it. Let's see what this area has to tell us, that's for sure. Yep, that's a mason. There's more of it down there. There we go. And we can get the date off of that. Missing the end of the L. 
That looks like uh, 1920s, probably. A ceramic. Just never know what you're gonna find doing a little excavation. And this has been a very interesting spot. This this has been. So I'll take my time and look through the layers and get a good idea of what's going on here. If I have time, I'll dig other spots too. There's a rectangular now, nice straight one. That came down with the structure, probably in something. Just pulled this up, it looks like a nice old tool, double-ended perhaps. Um, that's what it looks like. I'll get it cleaned up, uh, let it dry up a little bit and clean it up and see for sure. But uh, see what I'm pulling up, just a ton of nails. Um, and there's some larger round nails in there, so uh, we have uh, definitely uh, probably around the Civil War era time frame and and after. So yeah. Well, we got our trench dug, and there wasn't a whole lot of datable evidence in there, but uh, enough. This is the uh, this is the layer where the house would have sat on right there. All the rest of this would have basically fell from the years and decades of leaves falling and building up that humus layer. And I usually like to just go down and dig an extra little little trench just to see the layers in there, and it's solid clay. No evidence of burning. Uh, Except, um, I did find a couple pieces of charcoal, not a lot, so, I mean, that's, that's house structure right there. Yeah, so, um, you know, this place could have burnt down, but I'd expect a, a lot more ash to be on the ground. Uh, maybe, maybe parts of it, or they did some burning in there, I don't know. Um, we got a mason, that's datable, we got some crockery. That's datable. Uh, it's a little bit of China. Not so much datable. <laughs> the nails are datable. And we got a lot of 1800s type nails in there. Yeah, nothing hand forged or anything. These are all machine made. So. That's a nice one. I don't know, that might be uh, maybe just a, a round nail falling apart. Oh, that's a strange, strange look to it. Then we have that piece there, so that's nice. We can figure that out. That's it so far. I brought my clippers with me today. It makes it so much easier to be able to cut these roots out and just snip them right out. So you can get down there easier. Sometimes, sometimes it cuts. Yeah, that's uh, that's vintage too. <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore. This thing's still kicking. But uh, that's the trench. Uh, just wanted to explore this spot a little bit more. There's a lot of nails, a lot of iron. So the structure came down. It wasn't taken apart. It came down uh, and rotted away. Um, so we'll be able to date some of that stuff in there, which is good. Uh, I'm going to go dig one more trench, and then I'll probably uh, do a little bit of metal detecting um, and a little bit of probing. I want to see if there's... Uh, let me clean that lens for you. Oh, there you go. It's dusty. Uh, and then I want to do a little bit of probing, see if I can find this outhouse in here, which I've never located yet. So I'll spend a little bit of time looking for that, too. Um, this will probably be the last time I come to this property just to pull this last bit of information out of here and then I'm going to call this one done depending on what we find metal detecting because the soil conditions change, the atmospheric conditions change everything changes and you never know what you're going to pull up 
but this one's pretty much done anyways let me fill this hole in we'll go dig another one I'm thinking that spot right there was a little workshop area or something um, because that's where I found my buggy plate the one that's in the High Point North Carolina Museum uh, just like Little House on the Prairie, uh, if you ever watched that, Doc Baker, his little buggy. In High Point, North Carolina, they made buggies just like that. And I found the data plate for it. The museum had the buggy, but I don't think they had the data plate. Now they do. I donated it to them. Alright. I'm curious about this feature right here. This rounded feature in here. So I'm going to dig this out and see what's here. Absolutely nothing. No pottery. Nothing like that. No buttons. Except for a couple nails. And these are, uh, yeah, one's a rectangular nail. I guess they both are. Yeah. That's it. Let's go see if we can find the kitchen area. I'm just kind of in front of, there's a little mound in there. I don't know if you can see it. That's the fireplace. That's where the chimney is. Uh, here's one of its brick. Nice big solid brick. Nice clay brick. Yeah, that looks handmade. It's kind of, yeah, I guess it is. You see it's kind of like off shape and everything. Maybe handmade, I don't know. But there's also glass in here already right on the surface so let's see what's in this spot might be able to get some dateable material out of here not much in this one got a few nails a couple bricks and just a little bit of window pane i'm pretty much in the center of the house but towards the fireplace on the east end Oh, got a big piece of crockery here. This green glazed. I believe this is definitely American made stuff right here. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. That's dateable. Oh, we got a piece of glass. Looks like the base of something. Nineteen eighteen ish, perhaps. I don't see any air bubbles in this piece. Let's keep digging. There's a piece of old iron down there, shaped like something. I don't know. I don't know. But you dig like this, you're bound find stuff. Look at there's a shotgun shell that I never found. <laughs> Make sure you sift through your dirt very well. Things could be hiding there. Hard to find. Oh, I wanted to mention something. Um, so I was watching uh, the most recent uh, Aqua Chigger video, and uh, he's got a buddy on there that he hunts with. He was hunting this uh, 1805 house or something like that, I think, or something like that. And he was sitting there flashing his light at this guy. I, I really dislike Aqua Chigger just for the fact that he, he's so disrespectful towards other hunters and stuff. But anyway, uh, he's flashing his light and at his buddy, and his buddy's digging the hole. He's down here with his pinpointer, looking, looking, looking. And his pinpointer, all he's doing is picking up nails, 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 nails. And he's still trying to find his, uh, his relic that he's detected. Um, the whole reason why I don't use pinpointers around here, they just, 
these old home sites are just filled with nails and iron and everything else it just takes too much time it it, it does you, you're fumbling around detecting every little mineral and piece of nail and iron and everything is just ridiculous and and that was a perfect example of uh, somebody who was using a pinpointer probably where they shouldn't have been using a pinpointer <laughs> amateurs <laughs> let's keep digging well here's what we found in this hole <laughs> Uh, things you're not going to really find with a metal detector if the ground is is so congested with stuff, you know. Um, you're definitely not going to find these unless you're digging for something. Um, but the only targets in here that you would have dug with a metal detector are probably those three right there. Uh, and uh, two in the same holes, interesting, two shotgun shells. And this looks like a little tiny 22 case. Uh, very crushed, yeah. <laughs> Got a little bit of uh, pottery here, nice. A little more. Uh, nice old nail, and uh, we got some glass. It's probably the same bottle. That's probably, it says 18 on it. It's probably 18 ish, or much newer. I don't know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell with just the base. And then again, it could be a 1961, but uh, I don't know. It's got that nice charcoal -y color, so I'm going to say it's a little bit older than that. Um, and we got that crockery. Yeah, so some nice little items right there. Let's, uh, let's go dig another hole, see what we find. Uh, one thing you can do, too, when you're digging your test pits like this inside these foundations, uh, as you're bringing your dirt out, sift it, sift through it with your eyes and your hands. And then run your metal detector over it. You never know. I don't normally do that. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good with my eyes. And, and I'm listening for that sound on the shovel. So, but you can do that. Just never know. You might find a button or two. That's a nice piece of pattern crystal glass. Probably from the 20s or 30s, I imagine. Kind of outside of the house right now. There's one of the corner foundations. Um, there's the lightning rod that's coming out of this corner. Uh, dug over there, dug over there. I'm just kind of hitting this spot in here. And I dug over there, and I dug over there. Uh, sun is east. Fireplace is over there. This should have been the front area, maybe. Let's see what we. Well, that's it in this hole. Got a piece of crockery and a piece of crystal glass. That's it. Um, of course, this method will help you find hot spots. Yeah. Make sure you sift through your dirt, all of it. Sift, sift, sift. Look for those tiny pieces. You just never know what's going to pop out. Old clay marbles, jewelry. You just never know. Next hole. Let's see where we're going to go. Let's go out on the opposite side of the fireplace. Um, Back in the old days, people always threw things up against the fireplace. If you find a fireplace mound, search around it because you're going to find a ton of stuff. People always threw their stuff up against the fireplace. It's just an easy spot to throw things, I guess. Uh, there's the main chimney pile right there, and it's falling this way. And uh, we'll put in a pit right there. Yeah. Easier said than done. Of course, I picked a spot that uh, is still full of old brick. <laughs> and we'll take these out. We'll see how far down they go and we'll see what they're covering up. Some of these I might have to use my shovel to get out. Alright, let me keep digging. Now that's some nice old clay brick. Look at all the impurities in it. That's handmade. That that is handmade brick. Look at that. 
made with natural clay from this area. North Carolina clay. Yeah. North Carolina clay. Well, there wasn't much in there besides a bunch of bricks. We got uh, some piece of iron here, probably a can. Um, a little bit of pottery and a uh, mason jar seal. That's it. It looks like a can top. Yeah, that's it. That's it down there. No nails or anything. There's another little piece of glass. Um, of course, we are outside of the structure where the structure sat, and I don't think I'm close enough to the foundation. I need to get in there more. Let's do that. I wonder if anybody used to have races with those little guys. <laughs> They're pretty fast. I'm right in the center of the house, and I have uh, a lightning rod going through the center of it. This is the same piece that comes from that corner over there. It wraps around and comes up here. Must have fell in. Not much in the center of the house except for a little bit of window pane, which is interesting. What's it doing in the center of the house? Unless, uh, you know, it had a double story or triple story, who knows. Uh, that lightning rod is really, really long. Um, so that suggests it was a pretty tall structure. And it could have came from one of the windows up above when the house fell in. It's very strange to have window glass in the center of the house. And, uh, you know, these look like big old timber framing nails. Probably, uh, probably from the roof. They probably re-roofed it at one time. Because uh, the majority of the nails in here are rectangular, older nails. And these are pretty big. Yeah, those are timber framing nails. All right, let's go metal detecting. We got an iron spoon bowl right in the center of the house. Iron. Some large, solid iron object inside the house. I don't know. Listen, listen to the nails inside this house. It's all iron. Big piece of iron. Let's let's dig that up and see what it is. Now, oh, there it is down there. Let's see what we get. Oh, it is that. Usually they have something on them, on the face of it. That looks like a big furnace or something. Maybe a boiler plate. It's funny, I never found that before. I guess that could be a stove top too, just with the extra top on it because it looks like it comes apart let me see if I can get that apart real quick and I'll show you because it has two hinges it has the top plate and then it has the bottom plate and it looks like they come apart and that piece right there looks like it's that might be a stove part or a water boiler yeah it's coming apart oh, this could be a antique waffle maker <laughs> oh it's decorative look at that you th what do you think waffles that's what it looks like to me or some kind of souffle or something 
Interesting. That's in really nice shape, too. I'm going to keep that. That's probably what that is. It's a waffle maker. And you see the pattern on it? Florida Lee. I think that's what they say. <laughs> this is going to be nice cleaned up. Wow. That's super. That would have went on top of the stove to heat up and you would have been able to make waffles. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a waffle maker. An antique one. Nice. I said it before and I'll say it again. This site right here produces the most interesting relics. Ah, I'd hate to be done with it, but my goodness. Uh, there's hardly any non-ferrous except for maybe a shotgun or sh shell or two. Um, we'll dig the ferrous and see what happens. That was a nice iron object. Antique waffle maker. I call it a waffle maker. I'm going to say it's a waffle maker. Yeah, cast iron too. Nice. Boy, I'm glad I brought these with me. I'm going to bring these with me from now on. <laughs> There's just so much stuff in here to cut through. There it is. Ah, oh, part of a plow, I think. Maybe. Window glass, more window glass. Interesting. In the center of the house. That's all root. Big long square now. Whew. All right, let's keep looking. Something from inside the house. I don't know. It has two little wings on it. It's heavy. <laughs> no telling. He broke his bike. I'll have you dig one with me. It's a screamer. Probably a can. piece of old iron. Interesting. I don't know. Finding lots of that stuff. And I thought I found all the horseshoes. <laughs> There's a nice one. Really thin. More, more bikers. That's the guy with the broken bike. <laughs> Could be a button or a shotgun shell. I'm hoping for a button. Yeah, of course I am. it's going to be just small enough where I'm not going to be able to see with my eyes, huh? Take a little bit more out, just in case it fell down. Alright. Let's check it. I'm 
not seeing a shotgun shell or a button. We're going to have to put the detector over it. Now the detector says it's right over here. The last bit that I took out. Got something. Is that it right there? Oh, it's a little fancy. Something fancy. Let me clean that up and uh, take a peek at it. Yeah, I believe that's uh, a suspender clip. A nice old suspender clip. Part of one, at least. There are still small objects in here. Shotgun shell or button, probably. That other one was really deep, so... it all off the shovel. Yeah, we're gonna have to check this one too. Just pull a little bit more out. iron in there. Something iron. I thought I heard something over that way. I don't see any iron. Do you see any iron? It's a bit. It's a horse bit. That's why it gave me that nice signal. It was picking up that loop. Oh, that's a nice one. There's a nice old horse bit right there. One end of it would have went right in the mouth just like that. Of course, that would have been turned up a little bit. Nice old horse bit. Twisted. There's an interesting little piece of something. I think it's copper or brass or something like that. Looks like part of a, a wheel, I would say. Hub. Yeah, I'm moving logs around. Uh, these logs, I've been searching this place for probably about four or five years now. Yeah, about five years. Um, and these logs, of course, were a little more solid than they are nowadays. It's a metal boomerang. I would, I would say that belongs to a plow. That'd look awful nice mounted to the front of your vehicle, wouldn't it? Yeah. A big hefty piece of iron right there. This one sounds just like a shotgun shell. But could be a button. Or a V-nickel. Gotta find out. Oh, the roots, the roots, the roots. It didn't sound overly deep. It's probably right here in this plug. It's kind of sandy, isn't it? This soil. It's not real rich. Of 
course I'm not seeing anything. Take one more scoop out. There's roots down there. I can't get through. Yeah. All right, let's check that out. piece of copper to something big chunk of iron cast maybe a stove uh, that's been in there a while <laughs> just another of the many pieces I find no idea maybe a file bent usually they break instead of bent some kind of grommety looking thing this is a nice sounding signal that shouldn't have any nice sounding signals. <sighs> Thought I dug all these nice, nicer tones. Well, that's why it was roundish. a rigging piece. There's something in there giving me a good tone. Uh, I see it. Oh, it's a rivet, it looks like. Some kind of rivet. I, I think it's a keyhole. <sighs> Mosquitoes. It is a keyhole. It's a small skeleton key. Yeah, see that? It's a small skeleton key. Maybe to an old lock or something. Yep. Well, I think that's going to do it for me today. As much as I'd like to stay out all day, uh, I got other things to do. Interesting. We learned a lot. One, we learned we missed a big piece of iron that actually turned out to be probably a waffle maker. You let me know. You comment and let me know. But also, we got a great understanding of what the structure almost looked like. I mean, it's there's still a lot of stones that are probably hidden out there that are hard to find, but you can see the main corners of this place. Um, I, and I still don't know what this is. I searched around all in there and everything. A lot of debris inside the home. I would probably say um, this was the very first front section and this was the add-on section. This was probably the kitchen. Although I'm not finding a fireplace or anything, this might have been where the stove was. And he put extra support in there to hold it. So, no telling. I don't know. But uh, I'll throw it on... Um, uh, well, I'll do a, a, a drawing of it with measurements so you can see the actual space outs that make sense so we can make sen better sense of that <laughs> so maybe it's hard to say this actually this might have been the front of the house because it's west well you get more sun you get more sun in the east coming up so i don't know they might have had their door over here who knows um this would be the north end facing the road 
I don't know. I don't know. I'll do a little research and I'll figure that out. But uh, I got what I needed coming here. Uh, beautiful day in the woods today. Yeah. Found some nice little things. Yep. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Shh. Shh.